My name's Eric Wielander, welcome to my channel. So maybe you can relate to this story. Every year at about the same time, my cable company would raise my bill and I'd create a reminder in my to-do list system to give them a call in advance of that and try and negotiate a better rate. But whatever we figured out as a deal, would always be a little bit more expensive than the last year or maybe it was like a two or three year deal but it was still the same thing just a little bit more expensive over time the cable company is the only hardwired internet connection to my home so it was the only option i had if i wanted high speed internet and they knew it and then i started seeing ads for t-mobile home internet which comes via cellular 5g and i should clarify up front this video is not sponsored by T-Mobile. T-Mobile and uh, nobody else has any idea I'm making this video in advance. But I saw these ads and was noticing that it was $50 a month. So that's less than 50% of what I was paying my cable company. But I also had in the back of my head that some family members had cellular internet with LTE in their home with a different provider uh, years ago. And it was just a really unreliable connection. But I've also heard on the technical side that 5G G is supposed to be this great new wireless standard that allows lots of devices to operate in the same place and lower latency and now most of this video is going to be focused on the concept and experience of using 5G home internet but I do want to talk about some of the details specific to T-Mobile here and so right now it's uh, $50 a month as I mentioned in my area but it's also no long-term contracts it's just month to month and T-Mobile promises that they won't raise the price over time. I'm sure they'll find ways to incentivize me to change to a more expensive plan in the future, but if I'm happy with what I have, the price isn't going up. And the other cool part of it is it's unlimited data. I was paying an arm and a leg to go to an unlimited data plan with my cable provider because I can easily use over a terabyte of data any given month. Now for setup, you get a wireless like router combination with cell modem in a box in the mail. And then once you take it out of the box, you need to install the T-Mobile home internet app on your phone and then go through the setup process there. And it will help you uh, experiment around your house and find a place that makes sense where the access point is getting the best 5G signal. So that's something to keep in mind that's a little bit different than a cable connection. Now, thankfully, I have a relatively central location as far as my smart home is concerned in my living room. It's pretty close to the outside, so there's pretty good access to wireless cell signal. So where I put it, my first shot actually got a good signal rating by them out of their like five different bars. And so it was plenty good enough for what I was doing and I went ahead with the setup. Now for this specific unit, there are two ethernet jacks on the back. And so I connected one to one of my Eero wireless access points as well as I sent one down to my 24 port switch and main smart home server closet which is in my basement and that gets into the Wi-Fi side now this does come with dual band Wi-Fi 6 for accessing the internet just with that but I prefer to use my Eero mesh system so what I did was I logged into the IP address of the router from T-Mobile and turned off the Wi-Fi now one of the catches here of course is you can't just use this as a modem to the internet you have to let the box actually issue IP addresses if you know what that means basically meaning it's going to be the central router on your network but if you're like me and you want to have a more powerful Wi-Fi setup or more customized you can go ahead and do that uh, by running that in bridge mode so I use an Eero uh, series of mesh routers and or access points and those can run in bridge mode which means that they're just getting their addresses and all the main things from the actual T-Mobile box but the T-Mobile box is not doing any of the Wi-Fi connection. Now, one of the downsides of this is that T-Mobile can see what's going on on your local network, but I have no doubt that the cable company was doing the same thing once things actually hit the cable line. So it is what it is, I'm okay with it, but it is just something to consider about this kind of setup. Now, you might be wondering about my smart home and all the devices that I have connected here well, when you change the network connection, but if you keep the network name, the SSID, and the password the same, 
it's pretty smooth because a lot of the devices just know how to connect to that network. So I changed the central connection to the internet, but all of the Eero access points stayed the same. And so I had to re reboot some of the home pods and things around the house, but within about an hour of things just having some time to sync up, everything worked very smoothly. Now, this is one of the catches with a T-Mobile home internet plan specifically, is that they put a device limit on the uh, connections up to 64 devices. And so if you remember last week, I was reviewing a light strip that connects to your network, your smart home via Wi-Fi. And so that's gonna be yet another of those 64 devices. If you use something like the thread protocol or a hub, like let's say something from Acara or Hue or Lutron, those are just gonna be one device on your network connecting your T-Mobile hub and all of your other bulbs and plugs and switches or whatever are gonna be off of those hubs, not on your actual Wi-Fi or ethernet network. So 64 device limit might be a deal breaker. It might be different depending on what kind of plan you're looking at, but that seems to be sort of the catch here. But again, as you look at the future of smart home tech and how it's moving to a lot of wireless frequencies that are more suited for things like light switches or light bulbs or smart plugs, you know, like thread. I did a whole video about thread previously on this channel. Uh, that's sort of the promising future of smart home, which will move a lot of those devices off. And 64 devices connected to your network is still a lot of devices. I have not actually hit the 64 device limit for as much stuff as I have in my smart home. And there's still plenty of things I have on a list of things I want to just bring off my network or pare down or replace with newer versions, especially as we have Black Friday coming up. It'll be nice to get a lot of these Wi-Fi devices replaced with newer things that just don't need to use my Wi-Fi network. So what's the actual speed like using 5G as your home internet connection? Well, my plan is rated to give me about 100 megabits per second down and about 30 megabits per second up. Now, it's just a lot of variability and T-Mobile seems to just be giving you the best speed they can at whatever time. So my speed will go up to something like 250 megabits per second. I've seen it clock that high for downloads. And then for uploads, I've seen it clock as high as 70 megabits per second. But at the same time, T-Mobile does say that they reserved a right to slow your speed down during peak times. So I've seen a, a sort of a low watermark of 70 megabits per second down, which is still pretty fast. And then around still about 30 megabits per second up. Ping speeds are probably the biggest difference here between a hardwire connection and a cellular connection. So a ping, most simply put, is just the time that it takes one little piece of pack get data on the internet to go from your location to the uh, test location. And so it's just testing that trip time. And the lower the milliseconds, the better. So on cable, I was seeing something between 10 and 25 milliseconds of ping time, depending on when I was testing it. Now with cellular, I'm seeing an average of about 80 milliseconds of ping time. Something that would maybe be a challenge if you're doing something like really competitive Competitive online gaming. For me, I play most of my games locally at home, so it's not that big of a deal, but uh, just something to consider. Now, you might be wondering about video streaming, you know, live streaming, video chats. I've done plenty of video conferencing on this connection. So far, it's been completely fine for me. The upload speed's very fast, and I haven't seen any latency or had anybody comment about me dropping out. So that's been completely fine, but I think there are some things with gaming, particularly competitive gaming, where every bit of that millisecond delay would matter. And especially if you're, if you're thinking about playing some kind of a cloud gaming service, that's not gonna be as practical on a 5G connection like this. I should to clarify that there are two types of 5G connection that you might have heard of. There's sort of what I would consider just like the standard 5G that you just hear people refer to as 5G. And then there's what's called millimeter wave, which that might be what you've heard of around some things about 5G where it's like if you get within a millimeter wave tower within a certain range and you're in line of sight, you can get ridiculously fast internet speeds. And that's supposed to be the future. And hopefully we can get millimeter wave into home 
home internet and that would really change a lot of this speed picture but until then uh, we're stuck with regular 5G. So other things as far as real world use, I've been using this for a few weeks now, uh, you know, getting video off of my smart home cameras, like my Eufy cams, Arlo, or my HomeKit secure video cameras when I'm away from home. All of that is basically what you I had with cable. I don't really notice a difference. And of course, if you're using something like Eufy's cameras or Apple HomeKit secure video, all of the detection and analysis for that happens locally. So any kind of latency of your connection to the World Wide Web really doesn't matter because you're just doing that on your in your home network. And streaming video works completely fine. I don't notice any differences even when let's say my wife or my kids and myself are all streaming different things it holds up just fine. And then on the reverse side, when I'm uploading these videos to YouTube, it's actually much faster because the best I could ever get as far as an upload speed out of a cable connection was about 24 megabits per second. So when I'm getting up to 70 megabits per second, let's say overnight uploading, that's a drastic, that like cuts the upload time in half or more. So that's a huge bonus for me. So if the costs were exactly the same, let's say a cable internet connection costs exactly the same as 5G uh, or, or fiber optic for that matter. I would pick any kind of a wired technology over any kind of a wireless technology for an internet connection. You got to consider affordability at a certain point and when you know I'm looking at the numbers for us I feel like we're getting about the same experience and we're getting probably more than 50% of the value we got from our cable company at less than half the cost we were paying monthly so that's a big savings over time for us and something that I think at least for the foreseeable future I'm gonna stick with T-Mobile home 5g internet I think in the big Big picture of things I'm excited for 5g home internet for putting pricing pressure on cable and fiber optic companies to keep their prices competitive because otherwise I think we're all just going to get gouged where a lot of us have very limited options especially here in the US for home internet now maybe you're a complete internet snob and you're just waiting to the end of this to somehow bash me in the comments about what a silly idea this is but maybe it's not necessarily for you but this could also be a good option for maybe some of your friends or family who don't have as demanding of internet needs as you do the other thing to consider is just that the uh, variability on this is going to be a lot bigger than wired internet so you're just going to have to try it and see what works and thankfully at least with this t-mobile plan it is pretty easy to get one of these units and and set it up and you know with there's no contracts or anything so if you try it and it's just not working out for you you can cancel it and just go back to, you know don't cancel your other internet connection until you actually have this thing set up and working now if you're curious about some of the wireless technologies inside your smart home I made a video about thread which is linked somewhere here on the screen which you can check out as well as products, smart home products that work with Thread. And so that'll take some of the load off of your Wi-Fi network, reduce the number of connected devices you have if you're looking at something like this. Thanks again so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.